Today we're taking a look at five hidden gem mech games on the PS2. Whether that be customizing a bajillion parts, destroying everything on the map, or fighting in massive epic battles, these are games I love but rarely see mentioned or talked about. So let's change that, starting with game number one, Battle Engine Aquila. Battle Engine is super unlike anything you've played. It's not just unique, but also a solid video game that's just a ton of fun to play. You pilot the battle engine, and it's got two modes. It can fly and shoot, or it can run around on the ground and shoot. Every level takes place in these huge, beautiful, colorful environments, with hundreds of enemies and allied forces fighting each other. You got infantry, tanks, flying warships, battleships, there's so much going on. You can fight anyone, but you'll likely lose the level that way. What you really gotta do is figure out where you're needed the most. Maybe it's defending some guys, or it's taking out a manufacturing plant that's pumping out more tanks. You'll get ranked at the end of every level, and there's a couple slightly different configurations you can use too. But don't expect customization, that's not really what Battle Engine does. What it does do is make you feel powerful. You're basically piloting a super weapon. If it looks at all interesting to you, I can't recommend it enough. And the best part? Yeah, you can play it on the PS2, but there's a PC version on GOG and Steam that runs great. Before Dark Souls, Elden Ring, and Sekiro, From Software were making the Armored Core games. In my opinion, Armored Core 3 really epitomizes the quintessential mech game. Tons of customization, awkward controls, lots of destruction, and just all around fun. 3, despite the name, is the sixth game in the series, and in my opinion, the best. You're a mercenary for hire in a post-apocalyptic world where corporations have complete control. The setting's a mix of syndicate with lots of corporate warfare, system shock because of an overbearing AI that controls everything, and stray, funny enough, with humanity struggling to return to the surface. The story and background lore are more often hinted at or given in pieces rather than outright told to you. You take on jobs from three major corporations, using credits to customize your mech, and you can also fight in an arena against other mercenary pilots. There's some cute touches, like the other pilots all have names for their mechs, and sometimes they'll even email you before or after a fight, taunting or congratulating you. The story is pretty easy to ignore, but I think it's worth it just because you don't really see settings like this in games too often. Playing with all the mech configurations is really the heart of the game. You'll spend as much time in the garage fiddling with the different build possibilities as you will out in the field. What kind of legs do you want? Do you want bipedal ones like a Gundam, or do you want tank treads? Maybe you just want to hover. Do you want skinny arms that can aim quickly but can't handle recoil, or do you want big bulky arms with lots of armor? Or maybe you want your arms to be guns. Sure, why not? Though, keep in mind this is a From game, so it can be pretty unforgiving. I simply couldn't finish a level because I didn't have strong enough boosters. Hard lockouts like this weren't super common, but they are present, so just keep that in mind and have a couple backup saves ready. The mech stuff aside, if you love customization, it's really hard to beat Armored Core. What's also really cool is that you can take your credits and mechs into the next game, Silent Line, after completing 3. The story picks up right after 3 too, so it's a fun world that rewards investment. And if you do check it out, keep moving. Mobility is king in that series. Get close to the Trojan horse and gather as much data as possible. I am counting on you. Like Armored Core 3, Federation for Xeon is a personal favorite of mine due to a few factors. It's an arcade port, but they added space battles and a few other features for the console port. There's an arcade style, well, arcade mode, where you choose between the Federation or Xeon storylines. Or you can also play the expansive campaign mode. This one's great because it's super lengthy, and you can make your own pilot as you go through, choosing which missions to take on, unlocking and managing different mechs as you go. Many of them have multiple weapons to choose between, and if you get damaged during a mission, it'll take a bit for it to get repaired. It adds some strategy in what's otherwise a very arcadey game. Most missions have you defeating waves of enemies while trying not to die yourself, 
but you'll also need to defend targets, take out massive airships, and test new prototype mechs. Even if you're not a Gundam fan, like I'm not really, there's so many different mechs here to play around with that it's worth a look for that alone. There's Zaku 2s, Gundam itself of course, GMs, gun tanks, Zugox, whatever those are, I guess underwater mechs. And all of this is wrapped up in this lengthy experience with tons of variety. It's not the most complicated game, but it doesn't need to be. Super simple, super fun. On the other end of the spectrum, we have Xeonic Front. Have you ever wanted to combine Rainbow Six with Gundam? If so, you're weird, but also this is the perfect game for you. Plan out your route of attack, configure your teams of Zaku, and execute various missions as a squad leader during the One Year War. To be honest, this game is really complicated, so you're gonna love it or hate it for that. You have different types of equipment and a max weight for said equipment. You also got three types of sensors you can use, such as radar, sonar, and thermal, each with their own pros and cons. Most of the enemies in the game will take a ton of hits from the front, but are weak from hits to the back. There's also a stealth mechanic that's critical to the gameplay. You can even set up your own custom routes for your teams. There's just a ton here, and none of it is especially approachable unless you're willing to really dig into it. But if you are into strategy games and taking things a little slower, then Xeonic Front is perfect. You have to be so blunt? Don't take me so seriously, Lieutenant. It also has nice voice acting, tons of personality, characters will chat back and forth, you can ask them for advice before every mission, run simulations, and honestly, I could just ramble about this game for hours. There's nothing else quite like it. Also, it being more up close and personal, you really feel vulnerable, which makes the exploits of people like Shar all the more impressive. You're in this slow, relatively weak Zaku mech. You're not a new type, you can't pull off these amazing moves like you see in the anime but you still play a pivotal role in the conflict. It's a really fun perspective you don't see in games very often. Sometimes I don't want to be the chosen one. I don't want to be a special superhero who saves the day. And for that, and being so bizarre as a concept, I gotta recommend it. Ring of Red is a weird one, and that's why it's gotta be on this list. It's like Fire Emblem, but not really. You control a team of pilots, high school aged, of course, thanks Japan, as you fight in various battles around Japan. It's alternative history, so Japan's been split into three countries, and the world's technology has moved to these bipedal mechs. What's really cool is that it's not just a mech strategy game. You also have to give orders to your soldiers who support the mechs. You can change their positioning, which makes them more vulnerable, but have higher accuracy. You can also fire at them or at the enemy mech during an engagement. I haven't seen any game do this type of stuff before. It's not perfect though. The animations and overall combat is incredibly slow. I might actually recommend playing this on an emulator just so you can fast forward. The writing and art isn't the best either. It's really not a super high budget game, but it makes up for it by being so weird. If you like weird mech games, you're not going to find much that combines as many systems as Ring of Red. Okay, so this was only supposed to be five games, but I felt a little bad about including Battle Engine Aquila. Great game, but the PS2 version isn't the best way to play. So I want to mention a final six game, as a little bonus, a little mech treat, if you will. Gun Griffin Blaze is an unapologetically Japanese game. It's by Game Arts, a developer most known for the Grandia series. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Though Gun Griffin is not a JRPG, as you can probably tell. You can pilot a few different mechs and take on about a half dozen missions. What's really cool about it is that it's all done in this first person and like Battle Engine, you're fighting alongside allies, tackling a bunch of different missions and objectives. It was actually a launch title for the PS2, but I never see it talked about, which I think is a shame. It has a really crisp, almost Dreamcast style to it. I like to call these sorts of games Dreamcast or Sega games. Crazy Taxi, Soul Calibur, Outrun, Daytona, just any game with crisp, low poly graphics, vibrant colors, and of course, big blue skies. It's comfy. I mean, as comfy as you can be piloting a massive mech. It's also a blast zipping around in this thing. 
you really feel the weight of both the mech and your shots. You can choose a few different weapons before every mission, and ammo is something you'll need to keep an eye on. You can modify your mech a little bit with stuff like an optional weapon, more armor, longer jump duration, stuff like that. It feels like a game you'd find at an arcade, fast paced and all the buildings are destructible, and I just love the look of it, so it had to be on my list. Have a hidden gem you want people to know about? Leave a comment letting me know what game and why. Are you going to play any of these games or have you already? I'm curious to hear about it. Thanks a bunch for watching. See you next time.